Let's talk about Americans living outside the U.S., usually called expats. American citizens and residents have to pay U.S. tax on their worldwide income. They have to file federal tax returns every year, though usually don't file state income tax returns or pay state income tax. If they've paid foreign income tax, they get a foreign tax credit. In addition, expats can exclude a certain amount of income earned from working outside the U.S. The amount that can be excluded is limited to a fixed dollar amount for each day they qualify for the exclusion. In addition, an expat can exclude the cost of housing in excess of 16% of this exclusion limit. To qualify, the expat must have his or her tax home outside the U.S. and meet one of two tests. The tests are the bona fide resident test and the physical presence test. Bona fide resident means he or she genuinely lives in the country and has not declared to that country that they don't live there. Visitor visas, like the ones shown here, don't cut it for bona fide resident. To meet this test, the expat must be a bona fide resident of one or another foreign country for a period that includes a full tax year usually a full calendar year. Under the other test, each day is tested separately. To qualify, the day must be one where the expat is physically present in one or more foreign countries for the whole day. The expat must have 330 of these days during a 365 or 366 day period that includes the day being tested. Counting days for the physical presence test can be tricky. It doesn't mean the expat must be out of the U.S. for 330 days during the year, only that any particular day must be in a period in which he or she is out 330 days. This chart, which is also on my website, sfoxcpa.com, shows how an expat could be in the U.S. for more than 35 days in a year and still qualify. Man, that's tricky. That's like having dollars and pounds in your pocket when you're in China. <laughs> Everything for U.S. tax is in U.S. dollars, uh, but dollars aren't used much outside the U.S. Any business you do outside the USA is likely to be in another currency. So how do you get from pounds, euros, or something else to dollars? There are rules for how to translate to dollars for computing U.S. tax. These rules are pretty similar to U.S. accounting rules. Uh, the first step of the process is to convert whatever currency was used for a transaction to what's called the functional currency for the business unit. Functional currency means the currency used most by the business unit. A business unit is simply some part of a business that keeps separate books and records, and conducts business. This could be a branch. This, by the way, is about the only part of U.S. tax law where a, the concept of a branch has any significance. The business unit then determines its profits in that functional currency. The taxpayer then translates the profits of each business unit to its functional currency if necessary, and then to U.S. dollar. When you exchange units of one currency, like euros, for units of a different currency, like pounds, you get a, some number of units of the new currency based on the current exchange rate. The same works for translating items. So if you had bought euros at one rate and then sold them at a different rate, there would be a difference. And that's called a foreign exchange gain or loss. The same thing happens when you accrue something in one currency and settle it in another. These gains or losses are usually considered ordinary income. A little more complex rule applies for translating foreign income taxes. You use the average rate for the year, the same as for translating net profits. Corporations and anyone who elects to accrue foreign taxes use the average rate, though, only if the tax is paid within two years after the end of the year in which it was accrued. 
Individuals taking the foreign tax credit on an as-paid basis use the average rate for the year in which paid. Otherwise, you use the spot rate at the time of payment.